What's up everybody, this is Tyler here with Savvy Hut Tutorials. This time we'll be talking about a quick question that I got on one of my videos. And the question was talking about how to create a beat, save it out, and put it in your pack section so you can quickly go over here and drag in whatever you created. For this example, I used my beat and I listed the beats per minute and everything like that. Here is the final product and I'll go through and explain exactly how I did this. All right, let's get this tutorial started. The first thing we will do in FL Studio 11 is go up to our File button, which is in the upper left-hand corner, left-click that, go down to New. So we start completely from scratch. You should have a kick, clap, hat, and snare, completely blank, new project. First, I'll fill in the same beat that you heard and I'll play that at 128 beats per minute. I'll play that really quick. I will save this out both as a .mp3 file as well as a WAV file, and then when I bring them back in, I will show you what the difference is between each, the pros and cons, and how you would use them. So let's go up to File, Export, and you can click on any of these. I'll just go ahead and click actually the WAV file for now. Go to your desktop and save it as anything you like. It doesn't really matter. We'll just call it Savvy Beat and I'll list the beats per minute as well. Savvy Beat 128 beats per minute. And I will save that. As I said, I'm saving it to my desktop. You may have a separate folder. That's fine. And left click Save. Now here, you'll see the output formats. It's listed as a pattern. I've got the wave highlighted already, but I also want to create an MP3. And you do that simply by left clicking. So I've got MP3 and wave. You'll see it will do both at the same time. Now I'll just left click start. And it put those out there. Now to bring it into your FL Studio, what I will do is go to my desktop first. And also I'll bring up my FL Studio 11 folder. And to get to that folder, You'll go into your C drive, which is on your computer. Mine says boot camp because I'm running it off of a Mac. Um, but yours should just say, you know, computer C drive. Program files 86. If you have an older version of Windows, you may not have 86. It may just be in your program files. And then find image line. And within the image line folder, you'll see FL Studio 11, as well as any other additions of FL Studio that you have. Within the FL Studio 11 folder, you will go into data. So left click that patches and we'll go down to packs and now you'll see all the different packs that I have so far there are a couple here like all kicks and all samples you probably will not have unless you've downloaded them but I've got um, you know a couple different plugins a couple different instruments that I've downloaded separately and, and put into my FL studio but you should see at least the loop section here is one of the folders you should already have double click that and you'll see all the different beats that I've got. And most of these, like DL Broke, Breaker, Broken, all that kind of stuff, was already put in there when I downloaded FL Studio. And you can see I added a couple other ones here. This is the My Beat 128 beats per minute that I had in the tutorial preview. So to put ours in there that we just created, go back to your desktop here, wherever you saved yours, and you'll see it created a Savvy Beat 128 beats per minute WAV file as well as an MP3 file. If you hold control, you can select both of those at the same time. Left click and drag it into your FL Studio 11 Loops folder. Now if we go back into FL Studio, we can left click our Loops folder and you'll see them right down here. The Savvy Beat 128 Beats Per Minute WAV file, and you can see the icon next to it shows that it's WAV, and the Savvy Beat 128 Beats Per Minute pattern or .mp3 file. Let me create a new project really quick in FL Studio and show you exactly what the difference between these two are. Let's first start with the pattern. I'll left click, bring it into my project. I'll go into the piano roll here and show you what you can do with a pattern. Now, I've got my .mp3 and when I bring it in, here's what it sounds like. But you can also change what it sounds like and change the pitch with the pattern. So if I wanna make it sound faster and higher pitched, 
So there's the plus to that. Um, and I'll add that to the playlist here. Let's say I create just a regular sound on C5, which I created it in. Let me zoom out a bit. And I'll drop my tempo down to 128. Now if I go to my playlist, I'll put that entire pattern at the top here. What you'll notice, however, if I go to song and want to play it all, it will only play it through once. Now you can repeat it over and over again, but if you want to create one long thing where the beat just continues, this might not be the method you want. Because you'll notice it stops right at the end of that, which is not what I had going on in my preview. So now let me delete this Savvy Beat pattern version. And let's bring in the Savvy Beat wave file that we created. Now if I go into the piano roll, you'll see that C5 we put it on, but it won't change. No matter what note you put it on. However, the plus is you can do, if you wanted a steady beat going on in the background, this one long note here, it's not gonna just stop at the end like we did with the .mp3 file. So now that I created that, I'll put it in my pattern here and let's play the song now. You'll see it'll play that one note as long as I put it out to. If I wanted to play it throughout the whole song, I could drag it on and on, which is not something you can do with the Savvy Beat pattern. So to finish up this tutorial, what I also did was just add a couple different instruments to show you a way you could use this. Let me actually put them on a separate pattern. And just added those snares right below it. Just uh, give you a demonstration of how to add instruments to an existing pattern you already created. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for checking in, and I will get you more tutorials, comments, questions, anything like that in the bottom. I am definitely reading them, and I plan to make more tutorials based on the questions you're getting me. All right, guys, thanks. Bye. I'll go ahead and show you exactly what we'll be creating in the end, and quickly go through create it, explain what I'm doing, and how you can create the same effect. All right, here it goes.